Up next on Laura McKenzie's Traveler, we're off to discover one of the most vibrant cities in South Asia. This is the real India. We'll explore the historic sites and palaces in Delhi, India. Pretty impressive, huh? And make some surprising discoveries. I'm here now going, what is it, until I looked over here. Then we'll learn how to dress like the locals. Beautiful, this hand done. It's all hand done. And get a royal insight to see if the rumors are true. I'd always heard that the hotels in India were like palaces. Don't miss it, this week from Delhi, India. This place is alive. And it all happens right now. I am so excited. I finally made it to a country I've wanted to come to for a long time. I'm Laura McKenzie and welcome to India, an amazing destination where modern chaos and ancient traditions meet. It's Delhi, India's fantastic capital city, and I can't wait to show it to you. A fascinating blend of the past, present, and future. It's a world where you can ride an elephant, play with wild monkeys, and stay in a real Maharaja's palace. It's been a thriving culture for thousands of years, and monuments remain as reminders of the great emperor's visions. Considered one of the cradles of civilization, India is home to a very spiritual society. Here, animals are highly respected, especially cows, and you'll quickly discover that they always have the right of way. Spiritual yet believers in the sciences, Indian kings were known to build observatories and other astronomical instruments centuries ahead of their time. Politically, recent history witnessed the powerful non-violent protests spurred by Mahatma Gandhi, which ultimately helped India gain its independence from Britain in 1947. India is fascinating for sure, and here in Delhi, you can get a taste and a view of it all. But first, let's clear up a common misconception. Delhi and New Delhi are not the same thing. The city's divided into two main parts, old and new. The city of Delhi contains New Delhi and Old Delhi. It's the second largest city in India with a population of over 20 million people, more than many countries have. New Delhi is one of 11 districts in the city of Delhi, as well as the capital of India since it was moved here in 1911 from Calcutta in East India. It's been the permanent capital and India's seat of government since the 1940s. Old or new, Delhi today can be absolute chaos. So embrace the spirit because it's definitely part of the adventure. A great place to start exploring is Old Delhi at the Red Fort. Spectacular, isn't it? The locals call it Lal Kilat. Lal means red, Kilat means fort, the Red Fort. Shah Jahan built it, he had great ideas, and he also built the Taj Mahal in Agra. Both Delhi and New Delhi are located along the river Yamuna, and you'll find this gorgeous fortress on the right bank in the north. This UNESCO World Heritage Site stands as a powerful reminder of the Mughal dynasty. For nearly 200 years, it was a main residence for the emperors. Constructed in 1638, the red sandstone walls protected the ruling families from invaders. And inside the walls, you'll discover a beautiful compound, several structures, halls, and mosques, many built in marble and all gorgeous to see. Next, hit the Mina Bazaar, a cluster of shops tucked away from the noise of the city, offering artwork, souvenirs, and other great finds. But if you've got the inkling to really shop, dive into Old Delhi, where chaos absolutely reigns, at the Chande Chowk Market. Fasten your seatbelt. So we're about ready to go into the market, and I hear it's really crowded. So you can walk through, but your other option is to take a rickshaw. Now this is really great because it's only about $5 an hour. And what I heard is that the rent of the rickshaw goes to the owner, and you have to tip. Now the guy who's pedaling you is working like crazy, so you want to give him a pretty good tip. So if you're ready, let's do it. Locals say this market is the only place to shop, and they're probably right. But it's no secret. From looking at these crowds, you probably already guessed that. So I'm going to be using this little camera here so you can see what I'm seeing, because it's incredible. Experience. 
sense. Why do I get the feeling we're going against traffic? In a market that's been going strong for more than three centuries, the vendors definitely aren't shy. The fan is beautiful, but no thank you. I'm not hot. My name's Fredo. Very nice to meet you. Oh, very beautiful. Very pretty colors. <laughs> yeah. So you don't have to worry about shopping in the rickshaw. They'll come to you. Historically, this market attracted buyers from as far as Holland and China, and now America. Traffic jam. The craziest thing is trying to cross the street. You see these little green and yellow things? Those are the tuk-tuks. They're like local cabs. And then we have the rickshaw. And then there's little vans you can rent as well. This is crazy. It's so much fun. I mean, look at all this stuff. This place is alive. Shiva Temple. This is a temple? Shiva. Shiva Temple. You'll literally find it all here. Electronics and jewelry, all kinds of gorgeous fabrics and clothing, handmade souvenirs. Now we're getting into it. Electronics over here. Keep your eyes peeled. There's more than a market here. It's a stretch of living history. He said over here is a 200-year-old house right here. And we made it. That looks so good. Remember, anything you can peel. Standing out here in the traffic and in the crowd is just incredible. I mean, the sounds are just crazy. Horns honking and people yelling. It's just a wild. Food lovers, come one, come all. The aromas are amazing with lots of options. And remember to eat only well-cooked food. And the vendors, they will love you. I love markets. No matter where I am in the world, I mean, it's really the place to get a sense of like local color. But like any market around the world, a few things to remember. Carry small bills. Keep your pouch with the zippers towards you. And have a sense of adventure. And don't forget to bargain. I'll finish shopping and my chariot awaits. Now, how do we get out of here? It's crazy. Nearby, you'll find that world-famous spice market everyone is telling you not to miss. It's Asia's largest wholesale market. It's incredible. Total aroma overload. Here in the spice market, you'll also find shops that only sell nuts and fruits. For example, we have cashews, California almonds. We have dried raisins. Walnuts, currants, this is great. Remember, India takes its spices pretty seriously. After all, early in history, spices are what connected this country to the West. The market is so fun, and the experience isn't just about shopping for dried fruit, nuts, and herbs. You also witness the whole process of the loading and unloading of goods. Organized chaos indeed. And when you're ready to take a breather from the crowds? So I'm up on this rooftop because my guide takes me down a dark alley and then up through three or four flights of stairs. I'm dying going up. But a lady comes down and goes, the view is worth it. So two more flights of stairs, out of breath. I get up here. I'm here now going, what is it? Until I looked over here. You're going to love it. We have papadam baking and drying out in the sun. There's marigolds drying on the rooftop and an amazing overview of the whole street action here in the Spice Market. There is so much activity and life, it is just incredible. And then my guide says to me, this is the real India. One thing I love in India is hearing the call to prayer. It's quite powerful. Coming up next, I get the inside scoop on what to wear and how. She is going to wrap me and show us how to wear a sari. Here's a tip. The secret to staying well in India is to only eat well-cooked food, no salads or ice, and only drink bottled beverages you break the seal on. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Laura McKenzie's Traveler from Delhi. Delhi, India is so exciting. This is a destination that will definitely keep you on your toes. The sights, the sounds, the smells of Delhi are incredible. One thing I especially love is the traditional Indian dress, the sari. It's gorgeous and historic, and I'm about to find out why. Well, this is Nikita, and I am at the Taj Khazana, which specializes in beautiful handmade saris. Right. So the sari is the traditional dress of India, yes? Absolutely. And you're wearing a top. Yes, so it's like a blouse, which we call like a half top. Um, and then you have the sari, and then that's tucked into a little skirt, which is which goes underneath it, which you can't see. Oh, it looks fabulous. <laughs> now this is Divya over here, and she is going to wrap me and show us how to wear a sari. Right. Wow, how long is this piece? This is six meters. Yeah. Yeah. Six, six meters yards, is yes. like 18 feet. Almost, this yes. Is six meter long. Wow. Wrapping the sari is a very specific talent. You have to tuck a lot. Oh, I have to tuck. Okay. You have tuck to tuck it, in. it here. Okay. And then do it here. Here. And then tuck some more. It's a beautiful fabric. Is this, right. um, this is pure silk? And this is all done, all, all handmade design done by the weavers in Banaras in North India, where they do it, where they handcraft this art. It's beautiful. Yeah. Silk, chiffon, georgette. Dressier fabrics used for weddings and special occasions. Cotton is most often used for every day. This is also traditional sari, which is called the katha stitch, which is, happens in West Bengal. This is all handwork of uh, katha. So basically, this takes about seven months to do this kind of work. Beautiful. This hand done. It's all hand done. Yeah. I think you have to take more than a quick lesson to learn how to wrap a sari. And do you have to have someone wrap you, or can you do this yourself? You can practice that. You have to practice, practice, you have to practice. OK. While it's I'm difficult. getting wrapped, what do the men wear? Men in India traditionally wear the, the kurtis and churidar. We have a model here. Come on in. And this yes. is the kurtis? Yes, so that's the authentic kurti. That's a churidar, which is a wrinkled pants Okay. Uh, made up of cotton. And then we team it up with a, a stole. We just, uh, you can, traditionally when the Indian Nawabs from Hyderabad and the Mughal emperors, they used to wear the shawl one side to, to kind of focus on, to showcase superiority. And then we used, used to walk with their hands on the sides. Today, the newer generation actually, um, as a style statement, just wears it around their neck. Oh, I like that. For both men and women, the type of Indian dress varies depending on climate, local culture, religion, and occasion. You have to drape this here. Yes, we call them pleating, so it gets pleated. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh -huh. It's quite voluminous. Yes. Okay, we're going to give her a minute. I will just stand here and be a mannequin. <laughs> You know, the thing is about uh, Indian saris, why it was invented is because Indian women are very voluptuous and round. <laughs> so when you wear a sari, a lot of the weight gets hidden. Aha, this could be my new go-to. I love the ah, black and gold yeah, and oh silver. Gosh, it's gorgeous. Like this? Oh, wow. Oh, yes. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Let's see. So I'm walking, turning. Perfect. And can you drive in this? Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Not I'm kidding. <laughs> and the cost? For a nice quality one yes. that's not all beaded and right. super expensive, about how much would you spend? A nice hand woven silk would start at about 7,000, 8,000 rupees, which is about a little over $100. A little over $100. Okay. Indian saris. Indian. Great souvenir. <laughs> Handmade from gorgeous materials, what a great souvenir. And literally, it isn't just clothing, it's a piece of Indian history. Sold. Coming up next, ancient mausoleums. Pretty impressive, huh? Modern markets and more discoveries in Delhi. This is the place. Here's a tip. The Indian currency is the rupee. Carry it in small denominations for bargaining at the markets. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back to Laura McKenzie's Traveler from Delhi. So far, we've had an adventurous rickshaw ride in a chaotic market and attempted learning how to wrap a sari. We've seen incredible sights in New Delhi, Old Delhi, North Delhi, South Delhi, all of Delhi, extraordinary and full of surprises. Next up on my not to miss sightseeing list, Humayun's tomb. Pretty impressive, huh? They call it a memorial to love because his widow built this in 1565 as a tribute to him at a cost of a million and a half rupees. That's $25,000 at today's rate. That'll build you a lot back then. One of the first structures made of red sandstone, the tomb was a key inspiration for another architectural wonder here in India, the Taj Mahal. Constructed in the 1560s, this mausoleum is a garden tomb, built with the support of both Mughal Emperor Humayun's first wife and Humayun's son. It was considered a very grand structure for its time and place, known as the Dormitory of the Mughals. There are over 150 Mughal family members buried in the cells here, including Humayun's wife, great-great-grandson, and many other emperors. Lots of epic architecture in Delhi was designed and constructed during the Mughal Empire. Also evidenced at another site, a 600-year-old step well from the 15th century. Up until about 15 years ago, the water came up to the one, two, three, bottom of the third arch, but because of underground subway construction, the water drained out. It does not look great. A popular Bollywood movie called PK brought some much needed attention to this architectural star that's Central Delhi's oldest monument. In Hindi, Bauli means step well, and several of these were constructed over time to provide the city of Delhi water for drinking or bathing. They were often near mosques and temples so that worshippers could cleanse before their prayers. Fascinating to explore and so important to protect, they're a key part of Indian history and culture. Whew, all this sightseeing earns you a shopping trip. Yes, that's how that works. And I discovered an amazing market in South Delhi. Silver clothing, pashminas, jewelry, souvenirs. This is the place. Food, crafts, clothes, so much to choose from. After another busy day of sightseeing in Delhi, you can retire to your palace away from home. I can safely say today that this is one of the most green and most progressive part of Delhi. It's also very strategically uh, located uh, between the old Delhi and the so-called uh, new Delhi of uh, today. It's beautiful inside and out. The property is located right next to a protected forest area called the Ridge. So this is one of the very few hotels where you actually get a, a very clear view of the greens outside. At one time, a hotel focused on conventions. Today, leisure, comfort, privacy, and personal service are the focus. See and be seen on the club floor. Premium treatment when booking the Taj Club category. We also uh, refocused on creating a premium category called the Taj Club category, which has 24-hour uh, butler services uh, available to it. You get one-way uh, airport transfers by a hotel limousine free. You get uh, complimentary continental breakfast. The third is the high tea, which happens in the evening, followed by uh, complimentary cocktail hours. The rooms, well, they're absolutely gorgeous, and the hotel is famous for its suites. The incredible Thiaru Suite is one of the largest hotel suites in the country, at over 17,000 square feet. We've tried to actually marry the contemporary uh, requirements of today's traveler. Uh, at the same time, uh, we, we also focused on retaining uh, what our regular customers in the past uh, really loved. It goes without saying that you'll also have all the amenities you'd expect in a five or six star hotel. We have a pool which is uh, operational uh, 365 days a year. We have a 13,000 square feet uh, facility which houses the gym, has a very large uh, spa center and a salon for our guests in the hotel. We have our own brand called the Jiva Grand. It, it takes its inspiration from uh, some of the traditional practices uh, of wellness which were prevalent in this country and uh, again marries it with the modern ways in uh, which uh, people uh, deliver massages. And the cherry on top? It's home to one of the most exclusive and well-respected restaurants in all of Delhi. Oh, to be spoiled like a Maharani for a day. 
or a week. India is famous for their palace hotels, and I think I discovered one of the best. Here's a tip, you can email your hotel concierge to make advanced transportation, restaurant and tour reservations at no charge, but a tip is customary for extra service. Laura McKenzie's Traveler, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Laura McKenzie's Traveler from Delhi. Delhi is a key point in India's Golden Triangle, along with Jaipur and Agra. Its fascinating history, buzzing markets, amazing sights, and different cuisines will impress you and inspire a return trip. Next time, on to Jaipur, Mumbai, and Agra to see the famous Taj Mahal. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of India with me and that you'll join me again next time from another terrific place somewhere else around the world. India, it's everything I expected it to be. Bye-bye. In Delhi, you'll be impressed with sites of old dedicated to science and the human spirit. Jantar Mantar is an ancient instrument used to study astronomy built by Maharaja Jai Singh of Jaipur. The India Gate was built to honor the Indian soldiers who died fighting during World War I. And the Jama Masjid Mosque near both the Red Fort and the Chandi Chowk Market is one of the largest mosques in India. Just remember to dress respectfully when you visit and you can enter the massive courtyard and climb to the top of the southern tower for an incredible view. 